Well, hello and welcome back to the Resto Saga workshop. And this week we're looking once again at the 1976 Land Rover Series 3 88 inch diesel. And as I'm sure you've guessed from the thumbnail in this video, there's a bit of a problem. I've discovered a crack in the block of my diesel engine. Now, the Land Rover is a two and a quarter litre diesel engine. It's the original engine for the vehicle. Um, it's never been out, other than possibly the chassis replacement before I owned the vehicle. Now, during the restoration, um, when I was working on the vehicle, there was a really hard winter. And I think the water um, in the engine expanded, turned to ice and cracked the block. At the time, all I noted was that there was a core plug had gone, but obviously I'm fairly certain that that is when the crack in the block happened. Why was I suspicious? Well, there's a little rust stain halfway down the block. There's no reason for that to be there. And there's an ever so slight uh, leakage of coolant. And I'm always sort of topping it up every few months. And there was no reason for that. There's no obvious cylinder head issues um, or gasket leaks, and there was no coolant leaks. So I suspect that is where the fluid has been going. So with this in mind, let's have a little think about what I can do, possible en engine conversion options, and maybe even fixing the block. <laughs> Okay, so I've moved the Land Rover down to the storage here and I've moved it outside just a little bit more light into the engine bay so hopefully we can see this crack that I'm talking about. Now, because it's all painted black and the block is all painted black uh, it does suck the light out a little bit but I'm sure you can see this little rust stain here and if I put the camera right down here we are, here. Sorry about that. I've just driven it down here so as you can imagine that exhaust is quite hot and that's where the crack is. Now, cracks in cast iron, which is what this block is made out of, are particularly hard to repair. Cast iron is a difficult metal to weld or difficult all alloy to weld um, as it involves either preheating the block um, to a specific temperature and using um, specialist equipment um, or alternative welding techniques, neither of which I'm particularly au fait with. Um, to be honest, my welding skills are quite basic. Although we can use a MIG welder, I really don't think I'd be able to take on a cast iron block. Now, the good thing about this leak is that it's quite slow and it's quite small. So yes, I am able to use it at the Land Rover, keep the radiator topped up. And to be honest, I've only really noticed it now. And by my reckoning, the crack probably happened about eight years ago. Um, so either I'm really slow in the uptake or the crack really is not leaking that bad. And I hope it's the second. Um, probably a combination of the two, to be honest, though. So what, what are my options? Number one, repair the block. Welding, it's going to be difficult to get someone to weld it. Um, number two, and probably expensive, actually, to get it welded um, and involve taking the engine out, transporting the engine separately to somebody. So not exactly ideal um, for, really, a vehicle that doesn't get used a huge amount in the grand scheme of things. It's more of a hobby vehicle. Although... I'm sure you all enjoy seeing it here in the channel and probably enjoy that. So certainly something to consider. The other thing I could do is repair it myself. Now, the repair I would plan to do would be to, if I can get this camera to focus properly, there we go. If I can lightly drill each end of the crack would be my plan. And then use something like a Dremel or a rotary cleaner just to groove out the crack slightly and then use something like a, a liquid metal compound such as JB Weld. Yes, it would be a bit of a patch job. It would be waterproof, but it would also expand and contract at roughly the same rate as the block. So it should be a reasonable enough repair. I'm informed that JB Weld has been used in this sort of thing before, used to repair crack blocks and heavy machinery such as JCBs and Caterpillar dump trucks, but replacing the engine probably is not as uh, sound an option or economically uh, a good option. So let's have a little think about what other options I have for replacing the engine. So if I wanted a bit more of a permanent fix, this is a 2.25 litre diesel engine. Um, it doesn't create a lot of horsepower, and I think talking about numbers of horsepower really, and engines of this age and in this application is really pointless to be honest. Um, this is a diesel, it's very easy to maintain, there's very little adjustment needed really in it um, and it does its own thing. I service it every year, I don't do a huge number of miles. It does everything I need it to, yes it's a bit noisy and yes it's a bit thirsty. It probably does about the low 20s miles of the gallon. This uh, Land Rover has the original 4-speed 
um, transmission and also a ferry overdrive and I, I think it's perfectly usable. Not particularly energetic going up and down hills, it doesn't have a huge amount of torque and as far as I know um, these engines create most of their torque um, lower in their rev range although I'm happy to be corrected on that. Now easiest thing I could do would be either to find a new 2.25 litre diesel um, finding one of those in good condition not really sure how easy that would be apologies if there's a bit of wind noise here um, there's not a whole lot of them about um, but to be honest there are probably more of them about than there are the petrol because a lot of people have replaced the diesels either for the petrol or for another engine um, so I could just find another 2.25 litre diesel would I do that? I don't know um, I'm sort of tempted to go for something a little bit more interesting um, but we'll talk about that in a second other diesel options, you go for the 2.5 litre, um, later Land Rover, sort of late or early Defender or 90 if you want to really be pernickety, um, 2.5 litre normally aspirated diesel, or there is also the 2.5 litre turbo diesel, um, both of which you can get your hands on, but I'm told they're not all that reliable, although I have no first hand experience of it. In terms of installing the engine, very little will need changed. Um, the bulkhead shouldn't really need change, the fuel lines are all there, there isn't a lot of engine management or any of that gubbins, so really not an unreasonable option for replacing, and it would look fairly standard inside, which I would quite like. Going over to the petrol side of things, I could just put a 2.25 litre petrol in. Now, why petrol? Well, I quite like the idea of being able to tune it. There are companies such as ACR can supply a stage one or two cylinder head, which always makes me laugh a bit on a, a Land Rover. Um, but you could do a little bit for performance. You could put an SU carburetor. There's companies such as HNJ um, produce SU carburetor conversions. Quite like the idea of playing with that. Also, instead of the diesel injection pump here, you would have a distributor, so you could put electronic ignition in it. Um, so you could have a bit of a tune about of it, get a bit more oomph out of the vehicle without overloading transmission, um, creating too much power and creating problems further on down the drive line. Remember, yes, it might be simple to put a more powerful engine in, but you also have to upgrade your brakes and upgrade your suspension. So, and especially on Land Rovers of this era, gearboxes weren't particularly strong. So you don't want to go wrecking your gearbox just because you've got a bigger engine and then you've solved one problem but created a whole new world of hurt. So what else, what other options are there? Going back to diesel again, the most popular engine conversion, probably if you believe Facebook and the various Land Rover forums, is the 200 TDI. Um, two versions of that, there were the Discovery version, the Defender version. Um, I'm not completely au fait with the conversions, but uh, one version of the engine is better. I believe it's the Defender, um, purely because there's different setups with oil filter housing and so on. So. Those engines are becoming increasingly more difficult to come by, especially ones in good condition that have been looked after. Turbo, I'm told the 200 TDI is quite noisy, but I believe the turbo on top of it is pushing the power band of what the transmission can handle as well. So you would need to be quite careful with that. It's a bigger engine as well. So you're gonna to have to create more space. And as far as I know, you need a bit more surgery um, to fit radiators and so on. So this is all pushed forward. And if you want the turbo and an intercooler, there's definitely a lot more plumbing work um, and installing intercoolers and so on. Things that are probably beyond my DIY ability without getting ex outside help in. But I'm be willing to be corrected. And any conversations in the comments are all very much welcome. Very much an exciting prospect would be a V8. Now, I know I've just talked about overloading the transmission, so it's very much in the back of my mind. But a three and a half litre, smallest of the capacity, Range Rover V8, I think would be absolutely fantastic. Um, I love the sound of a V8 and a big petrol lump. Whilst thirsty, I don't do a huge number of miles, so I think a V8 would be great fun. V8s, you're going to have to relocate your battery. It's going to have to go underneath the passenger seat. There's a little seat box in there. So that's going to need moved because you have to remove the battery tray, which is going to involve cutting into my nice galvanized chassis. In a limited capacity, yes, but I'm really not all that fussed on that idea. As far as I know, the radiator can either be pushed forward or you can perform some bulkhead surgery. Now this bulkhead's not galvanized and it probably will need a little bit of attention because there's start of surface rust coming in on the driver's side footwell. So if I wanted to put the V8 in, it's obviously a wider engine, so as far as I know, you're going to have to narrow down the passenger fitwell. So fairly ma major construction work. There's also considerations 
for the transmission, as I've said, an extra load on the drivetrain, brakes, etc, etc. So huge amount of fun, but probably a bit more work. What other things could I put in here? Well, if I really wanted to go left to field, I could think about the 2.6 litre six cylinder Land Rover engine. Now, they're not a huge number of those about, and they did come in the 109, but I think they did prototype them in the short wheelbase. Again, happy to be corrected. It's a longer engine, obviously, because it's got six cylinders rather than this has got four. So as far as I know, you're going to have to cut the bulkhead. The six cylinder bulkhead is quite different, or you're going to have to shunt your radiator forward. Possibly a combination of both, but it would be really cool. I think, as far as I know, they're a lovely engine to drive, super smooth, quite torquey as well. Downsides, parts, ability, parts availability is great, and whenever you can get them, the parts are expensive. It's also a thirsty lump, but who cares? It's a six-cylinder short wheelbase Land Rover, and I think that would be really, really cool. So I'm going to spend a bit of time looking into that. If I'm going to perform bulkhead surgery, it's going to be definitive. And I may even get the bulkhead galvanised after it. So lots of food for thought in that regard. It has to be said, however, if you're going to convert the diesel Land Rover, which is what this is, to a petrol, there's going to be significant wiring changes as well. And electric, auto electric certainly is never my strong suit, as you can notice from my lovely tidy wiring here. Um, so there's no uh, ignition wiring or anything like that to a diesel, so that's all going to have to be brought through. So I think it would be probably more of a major undertaking to convert a diesel series Land Rover to the likes of a V8, rather than a petrol series Land Rover because the wiring is going to be roughly similar um, and the, the bare bones will be there already ready for a conversion. So really in summary I have lots of options and um, there are probably plenty more options which other people have done and hey ho if you're a real YouTuber you want to talk about LS swaps but to be honest that's well beyond my capability at the end of the day I'm not a mechanic I'm just a guy fiddling around in a workshop so really don't think that's particularly of a practical option. So at the end of the day, options, get another diesel, convert to a two and a quarter litre of petrol. Not entirely close to that idea. Get a slightly newer diesel engine, two and a half litre diesel or turbo or non-turbo, or there's a two and a half litre petrol. Forgot about that one, but they're quite hard to come by. Nice engine though. 200 TDI or even 300 TDI, that's been done before, but my knowledge in that isn't particularly great. So I'm not gonna try and bluff my way through that. Um, any advice on this, by the way, is greatly appreciated. V8, huge amount of fun, great noise, might slightly overload the transmission and brakes. Um, as we know, and I've talked about before, the transmission in this Land Rover second gear is starting to go anyway, so it's going to need a bit of attention. I suppose it could be operated, but I don't want to cause huge amounts of hurt with brakes and so on. So there you go. Lots of options. Let's go back to the workshop and have a think about where we can go next. And so there you have it. A fairly quick overview of all the various engine conversions available to series Land Rovers, especially the Series 3. There are obviously differences between all the series, arrangements under the bonnet and different things that happened over the years of development. Also considered repairing the block. And I suppose it's food for thought. This is not a particularly in-depth view at all the available engine conversions. You could probably create a YouTube video on every single one of those engine conversions and cover them in more detail. And as I don't have first-hand experience of really any of them, um, other than what I've read and what I've looked into in my own research, um, I didn't think it was appropriate for me to do an in-depth video. But if that's something you'd be interested in, I'm more than happy to create that video for you. So fire me a comment down below. I'd also really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below. Please consider supporting me over on Patreon, such as MH Aquatics, and I'd like to thank him for his support. Um, please give the video a like down below as well. And as I said, fire me a comment. I reply to them all, um, both criticism and compliments alike, and any questions at all, I'm more than happy to answer. And I'm also keen for your suggestions as to what I should do with my Land Rover. So once again, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you again next week. Cheerio!